All right, hi, my name is Bojana Hretsina, and I'm going to lead you through a workshop in traditional pickle making for the Capital Ukrainian Festival, which is awesome because this is a very simple, wonderful part of Ukrainian culture that um, everybody can enjoy. So I'm happy to walk you through it today. We are going to essentially be using um, gherkin cucumbers, pickling cucumbers, and adding pickling salt, and our dill and our garlic and our spices and letting them ferment to make uh, lacto-fermented pickles, which ooh, are fizzing, which uh, will make them really nice and juicy and sour and crunchy, just like uh, maybe your baba made or if not your baba, you wish your baba made them. So we'll get to that. So lacto-fermentation is the process in which there is a bacteria, lactobacillus, which um, becomes present uh, through the salt brine, uh, interacting with uh, the cucumbers, which naturally all food, all things have bacteria, and the salt is helping that um, fermentation process so that that lactobacillus uh, bacteria dominates. And it's the one that we want to make these cucumbers transform into sour, delicious pickles. And we're gonna start with a clean liter jar. You can use really anything. You could use a crock or a ceramic vessel. Really anything will do, but you want the opening to be pretty small at the top and big enough that you can get the cucumbers in so that as little air um, gets in because the air, the surface that's exposed to the air is where um, molds or bacteria might become funky because that's where the bacteria can be exposed to the air and form funky things. Uh, and within the salt brine, everything will be pretty um, clean and sterile. So we start with a clean jar. We want to have a very, some very garlicky, garlicky pickles. So I'm going to add some garlic. So I just peeled some garlic for a liter for a jar. Just a few. You could do three or four. If you want it really garlicky, you could um, add some more. Any garlic will do. This is um, preserving the bounty of the harvest. So we're making these during the time that the pickles are fresh. We've just picked them from the garden or you just got them from the farmer. So you also want to um, have fresh garlic. So preferably Ontario garlic or, well, wherever you are, the local garlic. These are from the garden and the garlic is ready just before pickles come on, uh, cucumbers come on usually. So it's perfect timing really. We're making use of all the things that are ready in the garden at the same time. That's the wonderful thing about pickles. So we harvest the garlic a few weeks before, usually in this part of the country, very late July or early August. And then we're harvesting the cucumbers usually around the same time. And our dill is just starting to flower, which is a great way to make use of these beautiful flowers, get all the flavor. There's not very many um, delicate fronds anymore, but we can use the stem and the flower for flavor. So we're gonna stick one of these guys in the jar as well. You can put more, but um, sometimes it can be overpowering. So just one big flower and maybe some fronds will do. You wanna make sure that they actually don't float at the top. So you wanna push them in pretty deep. Then we need to add um, some kind of leaf that has tannins, that has a tannic content. The tannins will make the um, gherkin stay crunchy. So that's very important if you don't want mushy cucumbers uh, pickles, they're not really good when they're mushy actually. So it's nice for them to be crunchy and then really juicy on the inside. So we use a horseradish leaf. If you can't find horseradish, it's really easy to go out and find wild grape leaves or obviously domestic grape leaves. Oak leaves have lots of tannins. Black currant leaves, you could even use raspberry leaves. There's like tips of the cherry branches. So that gives us our flavors, our dill, our garlic, and our crunchiness. So now we just need to put our cucumbers in. And I've washed the cucumbers. Often cucumbers have, are grown in sandy, kind of silty soil, and they have a little bit of dirt on them, especially hiding in these bumps. So it's good to give them a good wash. 
and make sure that they don't have any blemishes or soft spots because those will just go mushy. They won't stay nice and crunchy. I'm just checking to make sure. I also want to make sure there's no like um, stem or flower blossom ends that will also go, go mushy. Just making sure everything's good and clean. Here. So I'm going to see if I can fit one more. And it's kind of good to just plan, look at your cucumber <laughs> bunch and see how they're going to fit in the jar the best way that at the very end you can find one that will sort of prop, prop itself sort of under the lip. Oh, I forgot my black pepper. I could add some black peppercorns. And you don't have to, but you can add a few um, or a little hot pepper if you want a bit of spice. So just, just a tiny bit. And I want them to not float, so I want to get them to the bottom and then stick this one guy on top. And I'm ready to pour in the salt brine. Beautiful jar of pickles. So for a typical um, medium brine, you want to do um, around two tablespoons per liter of water. So I have my measuring cup. I measured a liter of water here. And I could use a tablespoon um, to measure that out. Or if you have like a typical shot glass, that's about an ounce. So if you have those handy, um, you could do between two and three tablespoons, depending on how salty you want them and also um, how quickly you want them to ferment. So the more salt something has, the more preserved it is and the slower it will ferment. Uh, sometimes people make very, very salty brine so that things will keep longer and then they'll rinse um, the cucumber or the pickle before they eat it. Um, so yeah, that's about an ounce there. Sometimes uh, people use warm water to make it dissolve faster. You could do that, but you don't want the water to be hot. You don't want it to like kind of cook the cucumbers. So for our salt brine, we used um, pickling salt and it's coarse. So it's not the fine kind of table salt that you might use um, around your house or Himalayan salt or iodized salt. None of those um, really work for this lacto-fermentation. We need plain, um, natural coarse salt without any additives. That's also sometimes sold as kosher salt. So you can look for kosher salt or it might actually say pickling salt in on the packaging. Okay, so now we have our brine and we just pour it in. So I've only used half because it was pretty full. So this will be for my next batch. Because I have a few more cucumbers. So there's some peppercorns floating. I don't want anything floating. If something floats, often um, some mold will grow on top, and that's fine. Um, that's actually really common and happens usually regardless. So if, because there's little bits of whatever floating, little bits of dill. If mold forms, if it's white, it's perfectly fine. It probably will just be some white scum or mold. You can just take a spoon and scoop it off and just discard it and it doesn't affect the pickles at all. Even sometimes there's a bit of mold in the brine. If you're grossed out, you can take out the pickles and rinse them, but it really doesn't affect um, the fermentation. That's like a natural process that will occur where the air touches the surface of the brine. And um, I'm going to leave these to sit on my counter at home. I have a bunch actually sitting there for a few days. And I'm just gonna leave the lid really loosely sitting on top. You could leave a cheesecloth so there's more airflow if you want it to ferment faster. Really makes no difference. You could just leave it like this, whatever, just so that flies don't get in there. And this will start fermenting in a day or two depending on how warm it is. And when the color starts to change, you know that it's working. And when it's fully changed, then your pickles are ready and you can taste them and see whether you like the flavor or whether you think they should um, ferment a little bit longer. So I've had this jar on the counter for a few days. You can see the color has changed a little bit, but not fully. You kind of want that pickle color, right? Like more yellow, 
uh, olive green. So this cucumber that was on top has only changed like half, it only half fermented. So we want this to ferment a, a little bit longer. The ones that were deeper inside actually have fermented more. These might be ready, but I'll just taste them and see what they taste like and whether I like them and then decide whether they're ready. Once they've fermented to the point that I'm happy with and I like the flavor, if I want to stop them from fermenting further and getting really, really sour or mushy, I just put them in the fridge. So the cold will slow it down. They'll probably still ferment like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but the fridge will slow down that process. So that's it. That's all there is to it. It's really easy to make uh, pickles the natural way. No vinegar required, no boiling, no canning. Um, if you have the ability to keep a lot of pickles in your fridge, you can keep them there <laughs> for a long time over the winter and enjoy them. Um, or you could also can them, which would be another step, which I'm not going to go into today. But if you want to learn about that, there's a lot of resources that tell you you could pour out the brine, boil it, pour it back in and do a water bath. Um, there's several different methods. The great thing about salt brine is you can ferment many things and you could ferment tomatoes. That's a traditional Ukrainian pickle as well. So get re like really nice firm little tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are great or even these kind of plum sized ones and just do the whole basically same process. Um, of course we do this with cabbage, pretty similar to make sauerkraut. Um, some people pickle plums, uh, like sort of unripe plums. There's lots of things you can pickle and it makes them delicious. And there's live bacteria, so it's very healthy for your gut. And it's traditional Ukrainian culture, so enjoy it.